Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Elizabeth Schneider, Senior Global Marketing Manager with Manistream. Today, we will be discussing some exciting developments in the field of spatial biology. As a pioneer in spatial, Nanostring is advancing the field of spatial multiomics to provide high plex and high sensitive profiling of tissues while maintaining their spatial location. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce our three Nanostring scientists who have been at the forefront of the development of instruments, tools, and applications for spatial biology. We have Sarah Warren, Senior Director of Translational Sciences, Joe Beecham, our Chief Scientific Officer, Senior VP of R&D, and Margaret Hong, Associate Director of Research. So to start out, Joe, could you walk us through some of the technology developments that have been happening at Nanostring in the last three or five years in the field of spatial multiomics? Yeah, sure, Elizabeth. I think you know, we have four main goals we really wanted to accomplish with the uh, continued development of spatial biology. Uh, first one was unlimited plex. So we wanted to make all the plex unlimited for both RNA and protein. So now both proteins and RNA are now next-gen sequencing readout with unlimited plex. Then the other aspect that was really key was the multi-omic aspects. The idea of being able to profile unlimited plex for both RNA and protein is really important, and both those analytes continue to be important for our spatial development, biology development. You know, you have a background in NGS and in sequencing. Um, how does the Geomics Digital Spatial Profiler compare to other spatial biology platforms out there in terms of the ease of use and the workflow? Yeah, the number one thing I think that sets us apart is our chemistry. Um, as you say, it's uh, a very simple and straightforward chemistry. For example, the in situ probe um, is coupled to a photocleavable linker that's coupled to a tag. And we simply shine light on the tissue in um, a guided way, user um, form way, to release those oligos. And straight away, we sequence. And from that sequencing, uh, we can we can interrogate the whole transcriptome of the cells on the tissue itself. How will spatial biology be a driving force for advancing our knowledge about disease and about biology? It's been a world for a long time where we have access to bulk sequencing technology and we have single cell sequencing technology. And now spatial technologies, and especially technologies like the genomics, really allow us to look with whole transcriptome or, or, or vast numbers of proteins and understand where in the tissue that information is coming from. Margaret, you know, it took some time before every lab had access to NGS. So, you know, how does Nanostring plan to enable researchers to be able to access that whole transcriptomic profiling on the spatial level? Yeah, I think that Nanostring can do that with our automation, our workflow, um, both in the sample prep automation and also in the analytics itself in the back end. Yeah, and as I understand, actually, the um, sequencing output or the, the readout of the whole transcriptome atlas is already um, able to plug into current you know, NGS analysis pipeline. Yeah, that's a, a, a great um, example of how we've advanced in our Hyplex chemistry. And so we started with the Cancer Transcriptome Atlas as our first product, which measured about 1,800 genes, and now we're at 18,000. So, Joe, could you tell us a little bit more about the Spatial Organ Atlas? One of the things that really struck me, Elizabeth, is when we first started doing the, with the whole transcriptome assay, which is unbiased, you just go in there and discover every pathway that's happening, um, and we started to apply that to tissue samples. Um, what you find in tissue samples, if you look at the functional substructures, so these are hundreds or thousands of cells that have to work together in a unified manner to accomplish something. So once we sort of realized that as a group, we said, how many of these different substructures exist in all these organ systems that have never been measured before? And we realized none of them have been measured before. So we, so we started this program called the Spatial uh, Organ Atlas, where we actually take those key substructures measure whole transcriptomes on them, and actually see what we discover. And what we found is doing that, and we'll be showing posters of that this year, um, is that we can recapitulate roughly, when we did the kidney, 
we recapitulated 50 years worth of kidney research in a single genomics experiment. But at the same time, we're projecting forward because we're seeing thousands of additional things that have never been examined before. So if someone wanted to learn more about the spatial organ atlas, like, are there any opportunities coming up where, where you'll be talking about it and giving us a sneak peek of some of the data? Well, we will definitely be giving a sneak peek of some of the data at the upcoming ASHG meeting. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's where we're gonna present some of the very first or spatial organ atlas data. We will be showing data on the kidney and the pancreas. So Sarah, could you tell us what you think the future holds for spatial biology? Definitely, Elizabeth. One of the things that I'm really excited about for spatial biology and geomics in particular is the opportunity to take these assays into the clinic. There are uh, so many opportunities that exist, right? Questions that we know could be answered if we had the right spatial information uh, that could help us develop tests that really impact patient healthcare decision making and, and give information to patients and physicians that help them choose the right therapy. So we're doing a lot of work in this space already. We have a really active collaboration with our wonderful investigators at Oregon Health Science University to develop a breast cancer assay that they may be able to deploy in their clinical labs. And we have a number of other projects that are too early to talk about today uh, that could allow us to see how geomics can work in other clinical opportunities. Well, it was lovely to speak with all of you. Um, I'm very excited about the future for spatial biology and what's coming next um, from Nanostring later this year and into 2022. So thank you so much, Margaret, Joe, and Sarah. Thank you, Elizabeth. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you.